If you've been on Twitter for the past few weeks, you have probably seen an image or two of this panda with a human face. With Was Chinese text at the bottom saying something? These memes have blown up recently and now are frequently used by Westerners. But where the hell did these things even come from anyways? To learn the hows and whys, let's go back to 2008. Rage comics are basically synonymous with the internet at this time. Comics talking about everything from internet trolling to toilet problems exist and are enjoyed by a wide range of people, including the Chinese. Chinese internet is notorious for its closed off nature to the rest of the online landscape, with the Great Firewall basically making it an isolated island. But that didn't stop some of it from reaching the nation. In 2008, Baozhou Manhua, Baozhou Manhua, Baozhou Manhua, Baozhou Manhua, a website solely dedicated to posting rage comics in Chinese would appear on the internet, and it would blow up, with many people making their own memes relating to issues that only the 1.2 billion people in China would understand. These comics would however still use the western depictions of rage comic characters, and it would be a while until they would finally take on their modern shape. In 2010, a cropped image of a panda bear from a famous commercial would make its rounds online. It wasn't really a meme image, just a simple panda bear, but it would be altered in such a way that would impact the Chinese internet for a decade to come. Its face would be changed with that of Choi Sung Kuk, a Korean actor. The face would be first posted to a 4chan-like website in a thread about Diablo 2, and the meme would blow up, with hundreds of thousands changing it with faces of other famous people was the text often being satirical and humorous. Kind of like a very large inside joke, which is probably how you would describe most region locked memes to be honest. The meme would become a part of everyday life in China, and it would even be capitalized on with marketable plushies and mascot costumes. To quote a badly translated Chinese article about the meme, Most memes don't stand the test of time, but panda heads are an exception. Many years later, various humorous panda head emoticons are still emerging. Now the little panda has started to play with his own meme. The little panda started to move. Creators from all walks of life learn from and learn from each other, creating a unique emoji culture. It is precisely because of the process of learning from each other and communicating with each other that the sand, scu <laughs> that the sand sculpture panda head has withstood the test of time. The meme would have to wait a little longer for it to get noticed by the West. Until 2020, when some of the images were posted on Twitter. I do remember seeing one of these during this time, but I could be wrong. But that wouldn't make a dent in the western internet up until 2023, when the meme would reach the wider world, with many viral tweets talking about them and how eerily similar they were to Vojax. Which is really funny when you consider that Vojax actually started out as rage comics. I guess in a way it all goes full circle. This is a really fascinating part of this whole new western interest in them. It's almost like entering an alternate reality. The Chinese internet is seldom accessed by those outside of it, and it's rare that anything from it goes beyond the mainland. But when it does, it surely leaves an impact. I have a pretty big video coming soon, and I wanted to make this as like a breather before that one. Sorry for keeping you guys waiting, this video is like 30 minutes long, so hopefully it turns out good. See ya around.